Hey everyone, Boston Blaisdell here. Hope you're doing very well. We're back for another Second Life University class, a series of bite-sized tutorials helping you to navigate the vast virtual world of Second Life. Today, we are learning about upgrading your avatar with a mesh head by the creator Lilutka. This video is focused on the male heads by Lilutka and I'm also releasing a separate video for the female heads, as well as walking you through the process of getting set up and customizing your head with lots of different functionality. I'll also be showing you a few different looks that you can achieve to give you some inspiration and ideas for creating various aesthetics within the Lilutka range. So let's get straight into it. All right, so we're gonna start by searching for the Lilutka main store. On the Second Life viewer, it looks like a magnifying glass, which will open up a search menu. Make sure that you have the places filter ticked and then just type Lilutka main store. This is going to generate a list of results using those keywords. Choose the one here, which states main store. Click the teleport button and off we go. So we're at the main store now. It's a nice, clean, open design. It usually gets quite busy here. It's a popular destination. We can find the heads over on the back wall and there's a large range to choose from. Lelutka tend to be very good with consistently producing new releases throughout the year. So which one do you go for? Well, of course, you may be influenced by the picture on the advert and that will give you some direction on the overall characteristics of the head. But bear in mind that the shape and the skin that you decide to combine with the head will make a huge difference to how the end result looks. And we'll be covering some of that in this video. I'd recommend grabbing a few free demos of heads that you like the look of. And when you're ready to buy, just click the buy button, confirm the amount of lindens, and then your head will be delivered to you. Okay, so we're going to work on a little makeover for our Monty system avatar head. The Lelutka package will be in your objects folder. Just right click that, select add. We'll have a couple of things pop up on our screen. We'll have a notification box requesting for us to keep or accept the item. And now if we go to our recent items, we'll see our unpacked new folder with all of the main contents included. So before we dive into these, I'm going to remove some of the parts from my current avatar by going to the worn tab. This will show everything that I'm currently wearing. Then I'm going to right click the root of the folder, select remove from current outfit. This will take off most of my attachments with the exception of shape, skin and eyes. We're going to be replacing these items with new ones. We are now stripped down to basics. We haven't got any face skin on the system head. It looks pretty frightening. But if we go back to the Lelutka folder, I'm going to talk you through the first set of items that you need to add. The order of this doesn't really matter too much. To get started, we're firstly going to apply an alpha mask. I'm already wearing a mesh body. And if you've seen my previous mesh body tutorials, such as Legacy, Gianni and Maitreya, you'll know that the alpha mask that I tend to wear is one named Bomb Head and Body with Applier Eyes. We're mainly using this to hide the system eyes so that when we apply our Bakes on Mesh head, it's not going to double up on the eyes. I'll explain this in a bit more detail when we go on to the customization part. So then if we scroll down further, we can go ahead with adding the head itself. This is now no longer showing the system head. We also need to add the mesh eyes, the teeth, which will show when the mouth opens. The HUD is here, which is a heads up display. And this is a user interface, which will allow us to customize and configure the head. We're also going to start with the default shape that's included with the head. We'll be making lots of changes to how the shape looks, but I always recommend starting with the shape that's included with the head. It will give you a good idea of the baseline dimensions. Then we're going to add one of the face skins that's included with the head. You'll get four different skin tones included and we need to add the corresponding ear texture as well and also a separate layer for the eyebrows. We will be changing the skin and the entire look shortly. It's very likely that you'll want to purchase a unique skin of your choice. There's hundreds of incredible skin creators in Second Life and I recommend that you watch my How to Modify Your Avatar Skin tutorial, which I previously released for Second Life University, if you need a bit more insight into different types of skins. One of the issues you may encounter is when the skin looks disfigured. If you do see this, we're going to fix it by going over to the HUD, and you'll see these two buttons saying Evo and Evo X. We're going to click on the Evo X button, 
So what we've done here is we've changed the application of the UV map. So what does that mean for you as a resident? Well, you just need to be aware that the majority of new release skins and add-ons for Lelutka, these will be made for Evo X. So if you're buying any third-party products such as skins, make sure that you check the advert and if it states Evo or Evo X, and then just stick with one of those systems. I would personally go for Evo X since it now seems to be the most popular one to create for. Back to our main folder, we're going to add a hair base. These need to be unpacked from the main folder down here. It says unpack hair bases. When you open up that folder, you'll have two boxes to decide between, male or female hair bases. We're going for the male version, so you need to unpack that one as well. Once unpacked, you'll get a long list of different hair base textures to choose from. We don't know what any of these numbers mean, so we're going to open up the images which are these little square texture symbols. And with these open, we can now pick the hairstyle that we like and then choose the corresponding hair color, which is on the vertical list of samples. We're going to jump back over to the folder again and then find the number which corresponds with the image. Right click that item, select add, and then we'll see it rendering. So before we look at the customization options that are included with the HUD, we're going to do two things. Firstly, I'm going to switch to a different skin of my choice, and then we're going to reshape our avatar. For the skin, I've removed the one which comes with the head, and I've swapped over to one by the creator Aviglam. And now we're going to reshape our head by right-clicking our avatar, select Shape. This will open up a range of appearance sliders, which we can manipulate by moving right and left. This will all come down to your personal preference, if you're buying a skin, they often come with a shape included, but bear in mind that all shapes are made for one single head. So for example, a shape for the Skylar head will not work on an Eon head. But now that I'm done with the shaping, we can move on to some of the other elements. There's two different ways of applying facial hair. Firstly, we have lots of bakes on mesh beard layers. It is a little bit hidden, so I'm going to show you a couple of steps for locating it. First, go to your main Lelutka folder, find the subfolder, which is named Unpack Add-ons Lelutka Evo X Bomb. Once you've opened that, go to the bottom of the folder and you'll see another object named Unpack Facial Hair. And this one's for Lelutka Evo X. Within this folder is where our layers are going to be included. So we can open up this image to find something which takes our fancy. And the same as we did with the hair bases, we can just match the number of the style to the item that appears in the folder. We could either go for something with a fuller volume down to much lighter stubble if you just want to add some contrast and texture to the skin. There is a second way of applying facial hair and that's by using the inbuilt HD appliers. You'll need to wear the HD beard object, which is in the main Lelutka folder. And then you can add the separate HUD for this beard the application of the HD beard is different to Bakes on Mesh because it sits on top of the mesh and you get more of a three-dimensional effect as opposed to the layer being baked into the mesh. To modify the color tint for any of the presets, I've gone into the pencil icon and chosen a darker color from the samples and then just use the vertical bar to darken or lighten it. The good thing about the Lelutka HUD is that you can use it to tint any of the proprietary parts and also third-party mesh add-ons, which are compatible with the head. When you want to remove it, just click on the detach button directly from the HUD, or you can of course go back to your inventory. Right, we're going to jump over to the eye section and we're going to look at two methods for how you can wear eyes and the reasons that you may choose one over the other. So the first are known as applier eyes and the ones that you get included with the head, these can be operated and modified in the HUD you get 18 different eyes to choose from. These look pretty good when you're starting out and you can offset the eyes using the controls down here. Just click the arrows to move the eyes vertically or horizontally. And also using these circular buttons to resize the eyes if you want them larger or smaller. You may also decide to shop around in Weld or on the marketplace if you want to upgrade your eyes with a specialist eye creator such as Aviglam. Depending on how you want to set your head up, they'll provide different versions in the pack. We're sticking with our applier method and using the Aviglam HUD, which is listed as Lelutka Evo X. With this open, it allows us to choose the color in the same way as we did on the Lelutka HUD. 
But what I like about these is that you can also choose the darkness and the effect of the sclera, which is the white part of the eyes. Aviglam use a system from A to D, A being a very clear sclera and D being a bloodshot effect. These can be applied independently to each eye. So you can just click on the letter and then choose which eye you want to apply it to. So that's the first method of having your head configured using applier eyes. The main benefit being that you can use the HUD to quickly change between colors and also have different colors for each eye. The second method that you may want to use, which is equally as popular, is to use bakes on mesh eyes. So I'll explain the steps first and then describe the benefits. Firstly, we're going to completely remove the alpha mask, which we put on earlier. We don't need to be wearing an alpha mask if our head, body and eyes are all bakes on mesh. Now we can go back to our Aviglam folder, choose the eyes that we want to wear. Now when I wear these, I'm actually going to have the applier eyes clashing with the bakes on mesh eyes. If I zoom in closer, you may be able to see that it looks a little strange here. So we need to tell the head that we're switching to bakes on mesh by clicking the bakes on mesh button in the Lelutka HUD. And here we go, now everything is bakes on mesh. We can no longer use the HUDs to change eye color. This section will become redundant unless we switch everything back. So one of the benefits of wearing bomb eyes is that you'll see the exact color as a separate attachment in your worn items, as opposed to using the applier scripts, which don't give us any visual record of what we're wearing. Similar to the HD beard, which we used earlier, you can also use HD eyebrows instead of the eyebrows which are on the skin. So over on this section of the HUD, we can add one of these eyebrow styles. There's six to choose from and they look really good. One of the benefits of using these is that you can resize and reposition them on the face using these buttons down here. So you have a bit more flexibility compared to bakes on mesh brows or the ones that are already on the skin. It's also possible to tint the eyebrows by clicking this button, choose HD brows, and then select the color from the palette. And by the way, make sure that you're wearing a browless version of the skin so that you're not doubling up on eyebrows. With most skins, you'll get different versions in the pack because they account for the fact that some people prefer to customize their own eyebrows to change the look of the skin. If you need to remove the brows, just click on the clear button. Moving on to face shine. There's actually lots of face effects here and these can add some more realism to the face and skin. You can use a combination of these shine presets with the intensity and glossiness buttons down here. For this to show, you need to have a light source directed towards the face and you'll need to have advanced lighting model checked in your graphics preferences. If I toggle between having advanced lighting switched on and off, you can see the difference when shadows and a bit of shine are added to the face. Sometimes if I'm in a laggy area, I'll have advanced lighting switched off. It's a bit more taxing on your computer resources, but for photos and videos, I generally have this switched on to get the full visual effect. And you should explore the different facial effect options in the HUD. One that I particularly like is under the HD button, then click the eyelid tab. This one over here will add an aging effect around the eye area. It will give the skin more maturity with natural looking crow's feet and wrinkles and you can actually apply two layers at once. So if I wanted to add some black eyeliner, just click on layer 02 and choose one of the other eye effects. One of the best features about these heads is the ability to control facial animations. These can be found under the triangle play symbol. They're divided into static poses and dynamic movements. This middle section here is what I'll often use for photography. It's really good if you want to move the eyes in a certain direction. Just click on the dots on the grid. Below the eye poses, if you want your mouth to move when you type in chat or speak on the mic, just make sure that you've got one of these vocal buttons selected. And as you choose the selections from left to right, they get a bit more animated. The grid below that is for static facial poses. There's several pages of these presets and you can choose one at a time. Similar to the eye grid, these ones are more suitable for Second Life photography. If you want your face to remain in one pose without any movement, there's loads of fun and quirky ones here. Just remember to deselect it when you're done. However, if you do want some facial movement on the head, experiment with some of these mood animations. You can have ones which are quite expressive and vibrant, or you can go for something more subtle where there's just light movement in the eyebrows and the mouth, for example. 
You can select as many of these as you like and they'll just run on a natural cycle. So you can switch them on once and then just forget about them. One thing to bear in mind is that when you detach the Lelutka HUD, the static poses that we looked at earlier will be stopped. However, with the dynamic mood animations, they'll continue to run even when the HUD isn't attached. And we always recommend that you don't leave any of your HUDs attached when you're exploring Sims. It can contribute to lag in Second Life. Sticking with the theme of animations, another fun feature with these heads is their elf ears. So over in the main tab, you can hide the default ears on the head and then attach the elf ones, which are located in the main folder. You can control the animations by clicking the blue box at the bottom of the HUD and choosing which type of animation that you'd like. With these heads, there's so many options for creating different aesthetics. For example, for this look, I've used the head that's named Jen. It's got completely different characteristics to the Eon head. For this one, I'm wearing a skin by the creator Not Found. And I've also added some freckles, which are included with the head in the add-ons pack. I've also applied some hair by Modulus, because although I love hair bases, they can look a little bit flat, which is how they're supposed to look because they're baked onto the head. So having some mesh hair can bring some life to it. Check out my how to customize your avatar with hair and accessories on the Second Life University page if you need some guidance around where to shop for hair and how to apply it. And this other look, which I also featured in that video, it's using the Lelutka Ford head with a skin by Not Found and hair by the creator Camo. As I mentioned before, the way that your avatar looks is really down to the combination of the head, the skin and the shape, and then just having fun with using different add-ons. Try the add-ons that are included with the heads before buying any more because there's so many that you get, such as hair bases, facial tattoos, and facial hair. But the beauty of Second Life is that you can build it up as much as you like, or just keep things nice and simple. If you do run into any issues with the head, or you just want further information, for understanding things like Evo and Evo X, check out the Lelutka website. They've got an FAQ section, which is really helpful. They've also got a very active Discord group with an efficient support team, so join that if you want to be part of the community and keep up to date with new releases and updates. But that is all from me today, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and leave a comment below. But take care of yourselves, be good to each other, and I will see you soon.